Hi, I'm Craig, and today I'd like to show you how to use a molly bolt for hanging large, heavy prints. And I can show you also different types of hangers, what to use in which application. But today we're just going to focus on molly bolts and how they go in. Now, if you watched my previous video, I showed you how to mark your wall where you want to put your print without actually putting marks, pencil marks, or Sharpie marks on the sheetrock. You can do it on painter's tape. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to go back and watch that one first before you watch this so that you can line it up. That's just a way of lining it up, getting it where you're happy with it. Because if you change your mind and you've got marks on the wall and then the print goes a little to the left, to the right, up or down, you're going to see those marks that you left. You're just making work for yourself. So check that video out first. And now we're going to talk about putting in a molly bolt properly. A lot of people are afraid of these. There's nothing to be afraid of. They're excellent hangers. By the way, they are rated to carry about 75 pounds each. Now it's really not the hanger because in shear you have tremendous force with steel. It's more the sheetrock that they're rating than the actual hanger. But the way you put it in, you have to do it properly so that that sheetrock can carry the full 75 pounds. If you're doing two, you theoretically can hold 150 pounds. I don't know too many prints that weigh 150 pounds, so it's, it's a little bit of over-engineering, but that's a good thing, right? So let's get into it. All right, I just want to show you a few different type of wall hangers. There's many out on the market. These type are for much smaller prints and they're perfectly fine. Uh, you can see how tiny of a hole it makes and it's only going to hold so much weight, but it's a hook for very lightweight prints. Uh, the same with this. this. This curved hook goes into the sheetrock and it leaves this, this thicker hook on the outside to actually hang your, your print by. And this is just like a, a small finishing nail almost, and it's actually out of 45, so that when it goes in, uh, the force pulling down is going to fight against that. These are fine for small prints. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about much heavier artwork. Now, any kind of a, a, a sinker or anything that sinks into the sheetrock, I do not prefer and I do not recommend because you've got to remember what sheetrock is. It's just simply plaster. It's very brittle. Um, when you drill into it, it turns into dust. And over, over time with the weight, these things can pull out and give way. It's actually the sheetrock that gives way. It's not the, the, the hanger itself. Now, this is called a butterfly bolt. And it does the same thing that a molly does, the same principle. It goes behind the sheetrock. It expands like that. And then you tighten it to draw it in so that this surface right here is inside the sheetrock. And then this is the outside. The only drawback to this, this uh, particular hanger is you can't take this screw out without losing this behind the wall. So that's why I, my, my hanger of choice has always been the molly bolt. I prefer that. Occasionally I will use these, but usually not. Now these are rated to hold up to 75 pounds. And the good thing about them also is, you, as I said, you couldn't do with the butterfly bolt, is you can take this screw out when you're finished. And I'll show you that later when we're installing it. And you can even put a little hook like this on that screw and put the screw back in because the insert you'll notice will stay in the sheetrock and the screw can come in and out as many times as you want to put a hook on or for whatever reason you may need to do that or if you're putting a, a, an L bracket on you may need to take that screw out put the bracket on then put the the screw back in the the actual insert or the anchor will stay attached to the sheetrock and I'll show you how that works in just a second but this is my hanger of choice it's called a molly bolt Okay, so there are two things to consider when purchasing a molly bolt. Number one is the diameter, and they're usually a quarter inch. You can get some heavier ones if you need to, but the most common household are one quarter of an inch, and that's why I chose a quarter inch drill bit. It drills the hole for that shaft right there. The other consideration is how thick the material it will go through, and this will go through one half inch sheetrock, which is standard in uh, most households. Occasionally, you'll hit five eighths which the half inch will work for that. There is some flexibility, but where you're measuring from is that solid shaft right there to right where my fingernail ends. Everything down is going to bend. That's the only thing that stays straight. So that determines how thick it is. And you'll see some in the store that might be really thin. That little piece right there is really thin. That solid shaft, that's for quarter inch or eighth inch uh, masonite or something like that. But if you're going into sheetrock, you're going to want to make sure that's a half inch right there. And it should say on the package for half inch. All right, these are all the tools that you'll need to install the molly bolt. Just any kind of a drill. It doesn't have to be cordless, but most are these days. A drill bit, a Phillips screwdriver magnetic tip for your drill, and then you might need 
some needle nose pliers. Any size will do. You may not need these, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And here is your molly bolt. And most are a quarter inch, which is why I chose a quarter inch drill bit. You want to go the diameter of this shaft right here. As I mentioned, these will hold 75 pounds, but it's really not this that's rated for that. This is rated probably for much, much more than 75 pounds because the shear force of steel is tremendous. It's the sheetrock that can only bear so much weight in, um, in uh, the horizontal application like that. Now, the first thing is you never want to use an awl to punch a hole through because what you're doing is actually shattering the sheetrock and you're losing the integrity of the board, which is what does all the holding. So you do want to use a drill bit. Don't try to make a shortcut and, and, and use any kind of an awl or sharp object. Now the next thing is, obviously, we have drill hazards. And what are drill hazards? It's anything that's behind the wall that you can't see. You could have a water pipe, a gas pipe, uh, an electrical wire, communications wires, whatever. So when you're drilling, you want to drill very, very prudently. You want to be, be very uh, light on the trigger. You want to almost feather the trigger as you're going through. And the second you break through, just stop. That's all you need to do. You don't need to hog it in and out, in and out, in and out, like you do uh, in the case with drilling wood to clean out all the, the slivers and all that sort of thing. Okay, so without further ado, I'll go ahead and drill this and show you how it actually works. So you put your drill on your mark. There you go. You see how little I broke through there? That's all you want to do. You don't need to go in and out like that. You're just asking for trouble. If there was a wire right there, you would uh, sever the wire. Now, Okay, now you can peel your tape off. And go ahead and put your molly in the hole. Now, I don't like using a hammer because there again, you're going to shatter or you could damage the sheetrock. You want to keep this integrity of this board whole and uncracked because that's what's carrying uh, the lion's share of the load. So you just work it in like that, push it all the way in. Now, if you look up real closely at the molly bolt, you'll see a little tooth right there on that side and on that side. It will be on the top and the bottom or wherever the case may be. There's two, one on each side. What they do is they sink into the sheetrock and they hold this center, uh, the, the actual insert still while this screw turns. Now, occasionally, the whole thing will turn, everything will turn. It's sometimes they're a little stiff right here where the threads are from the factory and it'll get away from you. And if that's the case, it'll tear the paper on the surface. That's not the ideal situation, but if it, if it does happen, that's where the needle nose come into play. And what you'll want to do is grab it like this. You're grabbing the outer actual insert. You're not grabbing the screw like that. You're grabbing the insert and go ahead and push it and hold it. You may need somebody to help you hold it. Uh, if that's the case, that's all right but you hold it tightly like that and you're going to go ahead and run it in. But if you don't need that, here's what you'll do. Okay, so here's a fresh start. We haven't torn the paper or anything like that. We're going to go at this as if these teeth are going to do their job properly. You simply ream it in. Again, you don't use a hammer. You just sort of gently twist it in until it goes all the way in. And then you push it until those two little teeth grab. Then you put your Phillips bit right in the center of that and you firmly push. Now here again, you've got to use a little bit of finesse with that trigger. You're going to have to feather it in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out like that. You don't want to strip anything and you don't want to put so much inward force that you push the whole thing through the wall. Because remember, this is only plaster. So you're going to have to use your judgment on this. And this is actually what's happening behind the wall. This is the back side of the wall right here. And watch what happens here. Now, did you hear it start to strip like that? It's, it's actually, the Phillips bit is actually jumping around in there. This gun does have a clutch, but it was not engaging. It's not hard enough. You have to know when you hear that sound, that's what it looks like on the backside. It's already done its job. All three of those little flanges have flared out and they've gone down and grabbed a hold. Now, if you need to, you can reverse your drill. As I mentioned earlier, and you can take that out. You notice the little red cap fell off behind the wall and you can take your screw out. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and put your hook on and put it back in. 
And that's why I like the Molly Bolt so much better than really any other uh, hanger on the market. So there you have it. That's how you properly install the Molly Bolt. Remember, you do not want to hurt the integrity of this board at all. Always use a drill bit. Drill very carefully. Uh, when you break through, stop immediately. Now, the other uh, if is if you hit a stud, you'll notice that you'll see wood chips coming out of the hole. You'll, you'll feel that the drill bit is going into wood. Then you know you don't need this. You can actually use a wood screw. That's a bonus. They're every 16 inches on center and standard uh, stack frame construction. Now, if you do use a wood screw, do not exceed an inch and three quarters because in the center of that stud, there's going to be a wire, or there could be a wire, drilled dead center, and, and you, there's only enough meat to use really about an inch and five eighths, inch and three quarters. If you go more than that, you're just running the risk of hitting things. So that's how a molly bolt works. Okay, so wasn't that easy? We've got our anchors in place, nice and clean. All we have left to do is to hang our art. So just pull your clips out and hook them over the heads of the molly bolt. And there you have it. Nice and center, level. There's no marks on the wall. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more helpful videos, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.